anyone paying attention to the Steam Deck Verified program knew it was going to have some, let's say, teething issues at the start. And Valve is starting to acknowledge that maybe the Verified program has some pretty serious issues. All of this started with a mod post over on the Steam Deck forums saying, want to report a possible error with the verified program. If you believe a mistake has been made with a game and it possibly shouldn't have the verified status, feel free to post it here. To make it easier for people to understand what and why you're reporting, please include what game, why you believe it shouldn't be verified, and then any screenshots or examples of why that is the case. And going over to SteamDB, we can see exactly why. Right now, across the verified, playable, and unsupported lists, there is about 2,800 games. And let's give it a really, really conservative test. Let's say every game gets three hours to be tested. That is not enough to test many games out there. So this would be 8,400 hours of work, or 350 days. And let's assume that Valve has slaves, and they have just... 20 or 30 slaves working on this. That is still a lot of work. You know, especially because Valve doesn't have slaves, at least to the best of my knowledge, and lets their employees sleep. So some games are fairly easy to test and give a rating. Something like Persona 5 Strikers. That game breaks when you click on New Game. There are no graphics. Pretty obvious to say this game is unsupported. Some games have more subtle issues, though. Maybe the cutscenes don't play... 10 or 15 hours into the game. Maybe there is just some weird breakage that you only see like 20 or 30 hours in. Ideally, you'd want to give every single game, I would say 10 hours at an absolute minimum. But due to the fairly lackluster or stressed out testing schedule, it's really unclear which, a lot of games will be marked as verified or playable when they really shouldn't be in that category. For example, a game like A Way Out. This is marked as playable. Sometimes it just doesn't load. I can speak from personal experience. The EA launcher is a mess. Deathloop is marked as verified, and sometimes when you suspend the game, it doesn't come back. The game just crashes. Doom 2016 is marked as verified, and it repeatedly crashes. Some people have a perfect experience. Other people, not so much. If you go back and watch my Doom streams, I've seen exactly this happen. In the case of Elden Ring, there is a case of half the screen missing, which is a problem. Uh, Hitman, which is a verified game, doesn't have gamepad support working and sometimes causes the device to reboot. GTA 5 marked as playable. Sometimes the launcher won't load. Prince of Persia Sands of Time, which is a great game, doesn't have controller support, and also gives you a safe mode warning, and then Sonic Generations is verified, has a terrible performance, sometimes dipping down into the single digits. That isn't even half the list, I'll leave the forum post linked in the description down below. I've looked at the verified and playable list as well, and I don't own a Steam Deck, but I've played a lot of these games under Linux, and at least from a general Linux perspective, a lot of these games should not be on that list, and I have no idea how they made it there. Now, obviously, a forum post was always going to be a stopgap. This isn't a great way to report issues. A lot of people are just going to not know this forum post even exists. And Valve has properly acknowledged this being an issue and has updated the Steam Deck UI to include an opt-in feedback option. The initial data we're gathering in this way, referring to the opt-in feedback, is about titles the Steam Deck verified. We're able to collect objective data, crashes, etc., to help us understand how well the technical side of a review process is working. But ultimately, the deck compatibility ratings are about the overall experience. The definition of working well is succeeding at enabling current and future deck customers to find the experiences they want. We want to make sure we're doing that or identify the titles for which your experiences don't match your expectations. But that doesn't mean that they're basically just rebuilding ProtonDB. So as they say here, the data collected by this system won't directly change the deck compatibility category for a title. In other words, we're not crowdsourcing the compatibility testing process, but instead checking in with the crowd to confirm whether the process we've built is enabling the experiences we all want it to. So basically they're saying that we're going to keep doing the testing process in-house, either having us do it or the game developers themselves doing it, 
And then if people say, wait, that doesn't actually line up with our experience, then they'll go back and test it to see, okay, maybe we didn't test this in the proper way, or maybe under this condition we didn't test, something does break. The way it works is fairly simple and entirely opt-in and can be changed at any time. So once you've played a game on your deck, you'll be asked the question, can we occasionally ask you for your feedback? If you say yes, then every so often you get a question like, hey, Portal 2 is verified on Steam Deck. Does this align with your experience? Yes, no, or ignore. And as mentioned earlier, right now, it's only for verified games. And there's likely, at least from what I can understand, two reasons for this. Firstly, verified games are sort of the most important to Valve. These are the games that Valve says works absolutely perfectly on the Steam Deck, and this is what you can expect as your experience when you buy a Steam Deck. If it's playable, sure, there's going to be some issues. If it's unsupported, well, you're basically on your own. But Valve is saying these games work well, buy a Steam Deck to play these games. Secondly, the program is just being rolled out, so it's better to start with just one category than going with everything. But I wouldn't be surprised if down the line playable does get included as well. Even though these games aren't perfectly playable, if they have, you know, a lot of crashes, most people generally wouldn't consider that actually playable, or if it doesn't have controller support, and the main way to interact with the Steam Deck is through a controller. These are things that are pretty serious issues. Sure, through Steam input there are janky ways to get around that, but playable and verified is about the out-of-box experience, not the experience you can get if you want to spend time actually customizing it and getting it working really well. I kind of wish they took a more community approach though. What they could have is the Valve Verified program, and then next to that, have the community rating. So this game is marked as verified, and then the community says, no, it's not verified, it's actually playable. This gives people quite a bit more information, and especially for games that Valve really isn't going to get around to testing for a very long time, like random obscure JRPGs, it would give users quite a bit of information that they're otherwise not going to have. Or maybe just contact the guys who run ProtonDB and ask if you can interact with their database rather than just building up all the data from scratch. Now this is probably going to be the final step, but I really hope the feedback system is extended to include games that are marked as unsupported. Because like how there are games on the playable and verified, which I have no idea how they are there, there are games on the unsupported list, which I don't know how they are there as well. Games that, from all of my knowledge about them, work absolutely perfectly. A game like, say, Ender Lilies. Now, maybe it has Steam Deck specific issues, but at least on general Linux, this game plays literally perfectly. There is nothing wrong with it whatsoever. With an older version of Proton, there were some cutscene issues, but the newest versions have completely eliminated those. So there is a non-zero chance that there are other games on the unsupported list which probably shouldn't be there either. And judging by some of the replies in that forum post, a user by the name of Hatchet Force mentioned that a game called Ghost of a Tale probably shouldn't be unsupported as well. He actually played the entire game on the Steam Deck with literally zero problems. All of this isn't to say that Valve isn't allowed to make mistakes. This is the first time they've done a game support rating system, so I expect there to be some issues early on. But the longer it's left with these obvious mistakes, the less people trust the Steam Deck Verified program, which sort of defeats the whole point of it actually existing. So it's really good that Valve has acknowledged the issue and is willing to take feedback and potentially retest games in cases where it makes sense. If they're not going to do a community rating system for the Steam Deck Verified program, I kind of wish they'll do it with general Linux, because right now, if you want to find out if a game works well on Linux, basically you're going to have to go to like ProtonDB or or various forum posts and things like that, and that's great if you want to spend the time working that out. But a lot of people just want to go into Steam and then play a game. Maybe having that integrated into the Steam client, showing you that information there, would be a really big improvement. But I have no idea if the Proton DB dev would be up for that actually happening. If they are though, and if anyone from Valve is listening to this, 
go and hit them up and make that happen, please. That would be awesome. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Steam Deck and the Steam Deck Verified Program in the comment section down below. If you happen to have a Steam Deck, does what the Verified Program say actually line up with your personal experience? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.